we have a huge dark hole on the sun, we have one, maybe two solar storms that are coming, and a marathon of aurora. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun has been a buzz of activity this week. Not only do we have this huge coronal hole that's been sending us fast wind and keeping us pretty close to storm levels for a little while, but we also had a big M-class flare from region 2449 that sent us a partially Earth-directed solar storm, which is going to hit us on the 12th. And now we even have a solar storm that looks like it's going to be launched right now. On top of that, we have yet another region here that's got this very strange circular filament that just looks like it's very unstable and it's going to be entering the Earth strike zone here in a few days. So we might even get yet another storm that's going to be launched earthward. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see things have been a little bit busy when it comes to M-class flares. We didn't have a whole bunch of that until about the 4th. Then Region 2443 popped off a few M-class flares concurrent with a solar storm, so that really kind of messed up the ham radio bands for a while. Then things calmed back down a little bit, but then on the 9th we had that big M3.9 flare that was eruptive that launched this solar storm that's earthward directed, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been incredibly busy. Since about the 3rd, we had a solar storm that hit us then. Things stayed busy until about the 5th, where things calmed down for about a day. Picked up again on the 7th, continued through the 9th, where you got just a tiny respite, and then picked up again. And between the solar storms being thrown at us from the sun and the fast solar wind, we have absolutely been slammed these past two weeks, which is great for Aurora, but you have amateur radio operators are probably frustrated to no end. And I hate to tell you this, this little bit of quiet that we've got right now isn't going to last because we're going to get hit with a solar storm here in the next day. And this never-ending solar activity has brought us a marathon show of auroras literally all over the world. I can't show you all of the pictures, there's just too many. So what I've focused on this time are some gorgeous time lapses and a couple huge fireballs that hit in different places in the world. So to start it off, let's look at the Aurora Australis. We had some amazing time lapses shown in Tasmania. We had a fireball caught in New Zealand. We also, for the Northern Lights, we had a fireball caught with the Northern Lights in Scotland. And we had several other places in the UK. We have gorgeous time lapses from Ontario. We also have some from Calgary and Central Alberta. In the United States, we have a gorgeous time lapse in Wisconsin and also in Michigan over Lake Superior. So what else does the Sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. And you can see that solar storm coming out. It looks like it's going to go to the east of us, but the western edge does look like it's going to graze Earth sometime around the early parts of the, of the 12th. So when that comes out, because it's moving so fast, it's kind of embedded in this high-speed stream, it really is not going to take very much, even though it's a glancing blow. It's not going to take much to rattle the Earth shield plus the fact that the Earth Shield is already so rattled anyway because of the last two weeks of craziness. So we do think that this is going to give us a decent amount of storming. So the amateur radio bands starting around the 12th are probably going to start degrading over the next 24 hours. Looking further into the future, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the Sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the Sun from behind. And you see all those regions that are beginning to rotate out of view from Stereo? Those are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days. But if you notice, right after those regions, there's kind of this dead zone. So about a week from now, maybe a little bit more, we're going to have a reprieve from all of these active regions as kind of a quiet period unfolds on the Earth disk but we've got a little ways to wait before that happens. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2443 is now rotated off of the sun's west limb. We now are dealing with region 2448 as well as 2449. Now that one is the one that shot that M-class flare that's launched the solar storm that should be hitting us here in the next day or so. We also have a little bit of a plage region here. This is the area that was kind of active and it's got that weird filament that may be launching. Part of it is trying to launch right now. And then we do expect to have some new regions rotating onto Earth into Earth view here in the next few days, so we still do have a very active disk over the next week. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the blow from that solar storm that's going to be arriving on the 12th. NOAA is expecting about a 60% chance 
of a major storm at high latitudes starting around the 12th and moving on for the next day or so. At mid latitudes, NOAA is only expecting us to have about active conditions with about a 25% chance of a storm uh, at mid latitudes. And then that should calm down a little bit. But remember, we are also in the process of seeing another solar storm launch. And if that happens, then things will not calm down after this storm. We actually will get more activity that will continue to degrade the hand bands probably through the end of the week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, since that big M-class flare that Region 2449 had a few days ago, it has since kind of calmed down. So NOAA's only giving us about a 20% chance of an M-class flare over the next few days, with only about a 5% chance of a proton radiation storm. Now, we did just kind of calm down from a minor proton radiation storm. We never reached the NOAA S1 level, but things have since then calmed back down to normal conditions, and we really aren't expecting too much for the rest of the week. So this week looks to be extremely exciting. We not only have fast wind from that huge coronal hole on the sun, but we also have one, maybe two solar storms that are coming at us. And because of this fast wind, it's not going to take much from these solar storms to pump us up to solar storm levels. So even that grazing blow that we're expecting on the 12th could be pretty significant. So unfortunately, you amateur radio operators and GPS UAV pilots, you guys are going to see some degradation probably in through the weekend. But if you happen to be an Aurora photographer, this has been a marathon of aurora over the past couple weeks and it looks like it's just going to continue. So enjoy. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.